Why, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. It's been quite a while since I've made a YouTube video. Been uh, doing art school and other stuff like that. Going through a bit of a rebranding too with my YouTube channel. Anybody who's paying attention can see that my name is now Mitchell's Inc. <clears throat> so this is the very first video of my rebranding. So, just a little bit of what you can expect going forward is a lot like this video. Every week I plan on doing some traditional art of some sort. Mainly right now I've been doing tons of digital art. And I don't really want to lose my traditional roots. So I want to keep coming back and doing stuff like that. The other thing that you can expect out of this channel is... Um, I will be putting out, um, audio illustrated stories, um, which I will be, I'm not, I can't really give a definite on when those will come out because depending on how in depth the artwork is for the story will greatly depend on how the, uh, the frequency of when I can release those videos. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, anybody who knows Boba Fett, this is a pretty quick sketch of Boba Fett. The line art isn't really what I'm trying to grasp right here. It doesn't look bad, but it is a little rushed. Um, I just got these. So I am trying to figure out the whole watercolor thing. Um, and I also got some gouache here, but this is more like an accent to go with the watercolors instead of me just concentrating on the gouache. I might do that in the future, but I kind of want to learn watercolor. Um, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that mm, my style of art can benefit from using watercolors because I really like to do like comic book-ish style line arts. Um, and uh, watercolor is really great with that because watercolor is transparent so you can ink it and then go through with the watercolors and the watercolors aren't going to go over or um, block out your inks or nothing so yeah i've got my palette here i think you can see that yeah got a palette here um i've never used tubes before so it's definitely going to be quite a bit of a learning curve as far as how much to dilute the um, the watercolor paint. Um, so yeah, I just got done getting these. These are brand new, never used them before. Went, got myself some Princeton brushes. These things feel so supreme. Um, before I was using these, um, uh, Nick Pro brushes. And I mean, for the price, they're not too bad. But they do not, I mean, you can probably see that they do, this is a round brush. They do not hold a tip, like, at all. Like, if you can see the, uh, the Princeton brush, the, there's not even a, uh, a comparison. Um, but these were quite a bit more money, unfortunately. But <clears throat> if you want quality you're going to have to pay for it, and that is especially true with art supplies. So, yeah, this is essentially what you can expect out of this channel. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe. I would like to try and get to a thousand subscribers, so that way I can wind up live streaming these sessions. I think that, that would be an awesome way for me to be able to communicate with you. Um, but right now, I am essentially just um, using my phone to film this. So it's a little bit difficult and YouTube is weird and for some strange reason they have a thing in place that says you can't live stream unless you have over a thousand subscribers. Um, and the way that my art room is set up, trying to hook up a webcam over my desk would be just a nightmare because my computer is like way over there. It's, it's way over there. So for me to run a cord all the way through would just be a nightmare. 
<clears throat> but all right, I'm going to dive into this. I'm going to quit rambling on. Anybody who watches my channel knows that I have a tendency to do that. So, yeah. All right, I'm just going to turn on some music and get to work. I really like the look of Boba Fett. He's pretty cool. Got this really unique style. I was looking up reference photos for him, and I couldn't help but notice that the the colors keep changing on him. Not exactly sure what that's all about, but it was kind of annoying. But I'll do my best, and hopefully you guys won't get mad at me for how he turns out. <laughs> I also pre-did the sketch because it takes a long time for me to get a sketch down and, you know, I didn't want you guys sitting here for, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes while I putz around with a, a sketch. Yeah, it takes a while. And then all of this music is essentially just random, just stuff that I've picked off of the YouTube playlist and downloaded. Alright. 
If any of you guys have seen the new Boba Fett and you like it, leave a comment down below. I haven't started watching it yet, but commercials look alright, so give it a whirl. Movies nowadays seem to be hit or miss, depending. not too loud it is if it is allowed I'll adjust it in the uh, editor I gotta film all this stuff when all my family is sleeping I got four kids and they're very rambunctious Trying to do this when they were awake would be rather interesting. Mm. Oh, these live drawing sessions, I don't plan on them being hours long. I'm trying to keep it under 45 minutes for you guys. I know that sitting around watching somebody draw is, <clears throat> you know be kind of a uh, task tasking on the what is it uh sorry got it can't think of that word now it happens sometimes I'm more focused on drawing than I am on <laughs> what to say on your attention, that's the word I'm looking for. minutes in I have to go a little bit faster with this <clears throat> sketch so I don't wind up going over the time that I wish to occupy you for but I hope this to be a weekly thing you know once a week just sit down and draw and if you're tuning in, I highly encourage you to pull out your sketchbook and, you know, sketch along with me. Absolutely. That's what this whole thing is about. Right, uh, um, this right here is going to be a little weird.
It's a very unique looking patch. emblem that he's got here. I might have to put these little symbols that are right next to it in with the uh, with the gouache because he's got these two symbols here kind of what looks like a water drop and like a backwards F um, but those are done in red so I mean I don't really want to do it with the black be even harder to cover up. Oh, Take a look at my reference really quick. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a pretty, pretty cool color scheme to him. I got a hair on my pen. Yeah. Yeah, I watched The Mandalorian. I thought that that was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. I liked it a lot. Okay, I got that <clears throat> symbol there. Blaster marks. All right. And I think I don't think there's anything else that I really need. Hmm. Probably gonna grab and darken up some of these. Like underneath here, there'd be a shadow. So just play around with the uh, line weight now a little bit. Also under here. Under here. throughout the whole bottom side of the helmet. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of really cool stuff you can do with line weight to add some depth to your art pieces. Just make it look like shadow. I want to add a shadow here because there's a rim here so I want the, <clears throat> the this part of the mask to stick out farther than the rest of add a little bit more line weight here there This is probably all just going to wind up being black anyway, but... There. <clears throat> so far it'll look at least halfway decent, I think. Alright. Yeah, I originally was going to do Kratos from God of War, but then the, the piece of paper that I have is so small after trying to get all of these details in there, I was like, yeah, I'm, I don't want to do that no more. 
All right. Erase a lot of the pencil, especially the stuff I'm not going to use. <clears throat> yeah, the story I'm working on right now is called The Rat Catcher. It's kind of inspired by, like, the, uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, like Warhammer fantasy and, like, these old fantasy uh, <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons but instead of starting out as a hero you're trying to start off as like a commoner kind of thing so he winds up taking on a job to eradicate some uh, <clears throat> some pests and winds up getting into a little bit more trouble than he bargained for. It's a pretty interesting story. It's a little, it's a short story though. It's not like super in depth. It's not anything like Harry Potter or anything like that. It's <clears throat> a little bit mild. All right. So here comes the, uh, the moment of truth where I try to figure out how these watercolors work. How much time we got on here? 20 minutes? All right. So I think I'm gonna start out with this brush here. Hmm. Take some clean water. All right. First time using these brushes. Let's see how it works. It's a very uh, is a little bit cooler than that so I'm gonna grab some of this tiny 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 little bit of this blue look too much way too much man that pigment is strong holy cow that I see that he has that red is essentially on his helmet right here you guys see that all right yeah Yeah, that pigment's very, very strong. You don't need a lot. There we go. Sweet. Alright, put 
put that down there. Wick it up a little bit. Man, that color is cool. I like that. All right. Now, his helmet is pretty much all green. But what shade of green? So probably somewhere in between these two darker greens. pigment this green here is almost perfect it's a light it's a lighter green but it's a little on the uh, a little on the light side and a little too clean clean looking if that makes sense so I'll probably just grab some of this I want to delete it, dilute it a little. Actually, man, these brushes are so nice compared to what I'm used to using. It's very, very real. It's a breath of fresh air. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Like a goblin green kind of looking color. Again got to be careful with how much of that pigment I'm adding because now it's a little too muddy so bring it back a little bit yeah let's see what that looks like yeah there we go that's the one thing that I am really looking for when I'm doing like color now because I, I typically use inks or like Copic markers or stuff like that but the problem with the Copic marker is that the color that's inside the Copic marker is the color that you get and the only way to change it is by blending it with other colors but there's only so much of that you can do before you start muddying it up or ruining the paper because the alcohol markers are pretty harsh um, so, on, on paper, all right, we'll see. I'm gonna try to leave this spot alone, so I'll go around it right now. Because it's got like a silver to it, which I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna pull that off, because I don't have a silver. But it's where he got apparently shot with some sort of blaster and damaged, and dented the armor a little bit. Oh my god, these. Oh, so juicy. Like, I'm used to. Like, the watercolor that I was using was like um, a. Uh, <clears throat> like, budget, I guess you could say. And this. Uh, was it called Holbein? I think that's how you pronounce that. Watercolors? Oh my goodness. It's a world of difference. It just goes down almost like creamy in these brushes. Oh my god. So good. I mean, it was an investment for sure, but it was a good investment. Now I just gotta really take care of them so they last a while. I probably should have mixed up a little bit more of this green because uh, he's got a lot of this color all over. Yeah, let's see if I can get a little bit more. I 
I think I remember reading somewhere that you should use essentially the biggest brush that you can. Maybe I should swap to a, a bigger brush. Oop. that color. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, looking at, like I said, looking at the reference, there is quite a fluctuation between how Boba Fett is colored. I mean, his helmet's always green, but I guess depending on the artist's interpretation, too, a little too watery. I'm gonna try to get a little bit thicker pigment in there. There we go. A little too watery. really light. I want it a little darker than that. These colors are really cool. There's also like a uh, a wet and wet technique um, with watercolor that winds up looking really, really cool. If, uh, we have time at the end of the drawing here, I would like to try that out. I'm going to rinse this off and move to a bigger brush. Definitely a learning curve here with all of this. Try to get it right. Yeah. Did not mix enough at all. I made something else I'll have to get used to just to see how much of this I need to mix in order to uh, <clears throat> to complete my art piece. The thing that I have to say is awesome about something like Copic Markers is that it is extremely convenient. You know what I mean? It's very, very easy because you don't have to worry about, you know, mixing your paints or nothing like that. You can just grab the marker and go. Yeah, this big brush is helping a little bit. I got to be careful not to... Nick these little areas and paint where I don't want. The other thing I gotta make sure is before I go in with a different color is to make sure that that area is dry. 
I wound up <clears throat> long well a while ago um, being a a, uh, a noob to watercolor I was working on an art piece and I didn't let it dry before switching to a different color and when I came in like I was like let's say I was working on this right here in between the armor plates I was painting there and I didn't let this area dry enough so when the wet of this met the wet of that they just started bleeding together Ooh, that was a mess. Big mess. Big, big mess. Not fun. Ruined the whole thing. Kind of made me a little bit mad. Kind of glad this paper is holding out pretty well. Because that's the one thing about also with watercolor is kind of like with Copic markers, you need specific type of paper to be able to handle the uh, moisture. Yeah, this thin little area here, trying to do that with the, that area, trying to do that with the Nick Pro, the other brushes that I showed previously would be very very difficult I mean you probably could do it with enough patience and hand-eye coordination but it would not be a task that would be easy, uh, that easy and like with these Princeton brushes I just did it with no problem whatsoever no problem. Alright, almost done with this color. I mean, it, it lit is a little on the light side, but I can always come back and I can always come back and refix that. Hmm. Try to figure out other areas to incorporate this uh, this red here. I found this song on the YouTube playlist it reminded me so much of that Tenacious D song I was like oh my god I have to have it it's so funny all right <clears throat> it kind of looks like this area right here could be that color. That is not dark at all. Let me see if I can. There we go. There we go some pigment on there I might actually go over this again with that just to get that just to make it cohesive I'm also very shocked at how much paint is held in these brushes without needing to refill. It is quite a bit. Yeah, that makes it look a lot better. That was 
way too light. Yeah, that's better. Hmm. This side also looks to be that green color too. I guess I'll make these red here. Are they red? I don't know. I'm just trying to find more places to put that red color. Because I like cohesive colors. And uh, I like this complementary color thing we got going on here. And like I said, the references for, ooh, that's very, very dark. <clears throat> like I said, the references for how he's supposed to look is a little vague in some spots. It, it, you know what I mean? Like some, like a lot of these little things wind up looking different depends on, depending on who's drawing him or sculpting him or the... Whoever did the outfit. Now this is the area, like I said, I really need to be careful because if it's not dry, I can put myself in a world of hurt with letting it bleed in. Made a little mistake here. I'm trying to lift that pigment out. Oh man, that works good. That's the other thing that I heard is really awesome about these uh, watercolors is your ability to reactivate and then lift the paint off. So if you make a, a mistake, it's possible for you to go back, re-lift the paint off, and then uh, and fix it should I make this here that color that red color I think I should yeah Maybe a little too dark. Try to get a little bit of a yeah, little, little bit of water. Lighten that up a wee bit. time we got 45 minutes doggone it well I hate to just leave you guys hanging so I will try to finish this up in a hurry because I don't want a part two either I think that would also be relatively terrible to do for such a small task. And then these shoulder pads here are yellow. Right? So we'll put 
some of this here. Get some of this here. Rinse this out. Activate this yellow that I haven't done yet. To there. Ooh, that was a lot. Accidentally picked up the glob. Always test your colors. Okay, so I want this shoulder pad to also be this color, but that is still definitely wet. So I'm not going to even attempt to doing that. Having a really good brush, I cannot emphasize enough how much that helps. It is crazy. So he's got those ropes, and they all are kind of a different color. I'm going to add this yellow in. I'm not sure where else I should add the yellow in. I know I want it on that shoulder pad there, but that is still definitely wet I'm kind of thinking I should have this color up in here too because of cohesion I you know what I mean because his shirt underneath is pretty essentially white it's like an off-white though it's like an eggshell white um so yeah I don't know. We'll try it. I don't I want this video to drag on for a whole lot longer, so I'm just going to throw this in here, and maybe it looks good. Maybe it doesn't. It's my time to have fun anyway. Ooh, that water's getting dirty. This here is... kind of hard to determine what's faster is uh is Copix faster or is uh watercolor faster because with Copix you have to do everything in like tons and tons of different layers whereas with watercolor I guess every a lot of people like to do stuff in layers too Copics, you don't have to mix your colors. Watercolors, you do. <clears throat> Watercolor, you can lay down more paint at a time. I don't know. If anybody does both, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think is faster. Watercolors or Copic markers. I'd have to say copy markers because if I was using my copic markers, I'd probably have this whole thing done by now. As far as the uh, painting process goes. But I am an absolute noob when it comes to watercolors. So, me being this slow could be a result of my inexperience as well. I must have really glopped down the paint on here because that's still wet too. These paint brushes are mint though. I'd recommend them. They aren't like stupid crazy like Windsor Newton Series 7 Sable brushes. I was looking at one of those and they were like, they were like, they were like 25 bucks for like one brush. I was like, geez, that's crazy.
Is that the right color? So yeah, like I can paint this down and you can still see my line art underneath of it. I, I really like that part about it. Yeah, be careful. Don't hit that wet part. I also don't know how much. I'm just trying to add a shadow to the right side. And then I also want to color this in here. Shadow in to the right side. now dry over here so I will clean off this brush put it back grab the other one <clears throat> I think it's looking okay a little a little bland if you ask me but that's mainly my fault a lot you could do to make this look really cool <clears throat> and if I had a couple hours to work on it really bring it to life but this is just the time for me to sit play around get in contact with you guys It's not still wet. Okay, there we go. Mm. It's still a little wet, but it's not that noticeable. So now I essentially just need to do the the black in the middle and uh, color done. Where'd my black go? There it is, right there. Let's see how this black turns out. Let's see how pigmented it is. I don't want it to be like a gray. It's kind of muddy. Is that area still wet right there? Shouldn't be. That is not a very deep black, is it? Yeah, let me retry to grab some more pigment. There we go. Kinda. I'm trying to be really careful because I don't want to ruin that red. Because once you uh, 
botch that up. That'd be very hard to come back from. Yeah, that black really helps that stand out quite a bit. Maybe next time we do something like this, I'll have the, uh, the piece already inked. So that way I'm not spending 15, 20 minutes <clears throat> doing the inks. We can just jump right into doing the painting. I really want to get better at watercolor. Yeah, there you go. That's that's a that's a lot better. I really had to essentially just <clears throat> wet the the black like very minimal, and then uh, use that. Whereas like with this, I want this to be a little bit gray. So I'll add a little bit of water, an eyedropper really helps so like that there I don't mind being gray so we'll do that there we go and now I'll try to add a little bit of something here not sure if it'll work add it really really lightly be very careful it's like a little shadow under here try really hard not to come close to that because that is still very wet down here almost like what I used to do with like washes like with the inks. Yeah, something like that. It's essentially the same thing. It looks almost identical too, which is funny. I don't know, like, I don't know. There's just something about the painting process that I find very enjoyable, but it's very difficult. You really gotta work at it. It's a whole nother beast. Yeah, it's actually almost this, the color of his suit, really. It's like this watered down grayer color. More like a, like a khaki color almost. What color were those ropes now? I can't quite remember. Hang on a second. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, some pictures he doesn't even have the ropes. What about this one? I don't know, they're kind of like a silvery gold color. I don't know, there's just something about watercolor that makes you feel fancy. Does that, does that mean, does that compute with people? It just makes you feel like an artist, I guess you could say, like you're actually painting. Let's see if I can get this a little darker for those shadowy areas. I don't want it too dark though. Yeah, there we go. 
And there we go. How's that looking? to this area here it's in between there we go kind of don't know what to do with those they essentially look white goldish kind of color I mean I could essentially tone this down quite a bit sort of make this into a wash. How does that look? Is that too, too yellow? I think the other ones are white. I'll just leave them white. Give a shadow there. These brushes hold tons and tons and tons of water. Alright. Well, I'm going to quit fiddling with this thing. I'm going to let you guys get on with your day. Thanks for stopping by. I really, really appreciate you. Honestly, I do. Um, yeah, be sure to... If you like this sort of thing, smash that subscribe button. And... Uh, Stick around. I'll uh, have a new video out next week. All right. Take care. Bye.